If you came to this video to learn how to unlock your metabolism, if you've tried every diet, lost the same 20 or 50 pounds over and over again, and somehow gained it back, I want you to hear me clearly. It's not because you're weak. It's because nobody ever sat you down and explained how your metabolism actually works. In this video, I'm going to break your metabolism down in plain language. We're going to talk about why repeated dieting makes weight loss harder over time, why your body fights you when you try to starve it, and how to finally work with your metabolism instead of against it. If you stick with me until the end, you'll walk away with a step-by-step -step game plan to stop feeling broken and start feeling in control again. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, a board-certified family an obesity medicine physician with additional training in nutrition and functional medicine. I've walked with a lot of people who felt betrayed by their own body, and I love helping them discover that their metabolism isn't their enemy. It's actually been trying to protect them. But before we dive in, drop a comment and tell me one thing. Which diet failed you the hardest? Keto, low fat, counting points, shakes, meal plans, something else. Now, here's the twist that you need to fully understand. Your metabolism is not broken. In most cases, it's doing exactly what a smart survival system would do based on what it's been asked to survive. Once you see it that way, the whole story changes. Let's start with the classic story. The new year is approaching. You pick a diet. You're motivated. You cut calories. You cut snacks. And maybe drink a few protein shakes. At first, the scale moves. Pants get looser. People start complimenting you. Then, you hit a wall. You're hungrier, more tired, thinking about food all the time. The scale stops moving or even creeps back up, even though you swear you're still being good. Eventually you give up, you rebound, and you blame yourself. Here's what really happened. Your body has a built-in survival system called metabolic adaptation. When you drop calories quickly, your body doesn't say, great, swimsuit season. It says, famine, we might die. So it does two big things. It starts burning fewer calories and it makes you hungrier. That's not a moral failure. That's your biology doing its job. So what is metabolism really? Think of it as the way your body decides what to do with every bite of food and every unit of energy. Do we burn it now, store it later, or waste a little as heat? Most of the calories you burn in a day have nothing to do with the gym. The biggest chunk is your resting metabolic rate, the energy it takes just to keep the lights on, the heart beating, the brain thinking, organs working. Then there's the thermic effect of food, which is a fancy way of saying your body burns calories just digesting and processing food. Protein, by the way, cost more energy to process than carbs or fat. Then you have NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. All the little movements that aren't formal exercise. Fidgeting, walking to the car, cleaning the kitchen. Finally, you have actual exercise. On top of that, you've got hormone traffic cops. Insulin, which decides how much you store versus burn. Leptin, which whispers to your brain. We have plenty of fat you can chill. Or, when it's not working, screams, we're starving, even when you're not. Thyroid hormones that adjust your overall speed. And cortisol, the stress hormone, that can nudge your body to store more around the middle. Now let's talk about how modern eating and chronic dieting reprogram that whole system. When your daily pattern is lots of ultra-processed food, sugar, refined carbs, and frequent snacking, insulin stays high most of the day. Insulin's job is to move glucose out of the blood and into cells. But it sends another message too. Store fat. Don't burn it. If insulin is the fat storage boss, a high insulin environment is like constantly being told, do not touch the fat in the bank. Spend the sugar in your pocket. Then we combine that with the crash diet mentality, slashing calories with no thought about preserving muscle or lowering insulin. You may lose weight, but you tend to lose muscle along with fat. Less muscle means your resting metabolic rate goes down. So now you have a body that burns fewer calories at rest, is very good at storing fat, and is highly motivated to regain what it lost. Add in leptin resistance. As you gain fat over years, leptin levels rise, but the brain stops hearing the signal. So even with plenty of stored energy on board, your brain behaves like you're low on fuel. 
That means more hunger, more cravings, more defensive weight regain after every diet. Then throw poor sleep and chronic stress on top and cortisol walks in and says, let's store more around the belly and crank up cravings for quick energy. When you put all that together, you get what some people call a weight set point or defended weight. Your body behaves as if it has a favorite range it wants to keep you in. And when you diet in the old school way, it defends that range aggressively. If you want to learn more, I've made an entire video about it, which I'll link on the end screen. Before we continue, if this is resonating so far, hit that like button and consider subscribing because my whole channel is about root cause metabolic health, not just eat less, move more slogans. Now let's talk about the good news because it's not all doom and gloom. Metabolism is not a fixed number carved in stone. It's a living adaptive system. Yes, you can slow it down, but you can also nudge it in a healthier direction. You can improve insulin sensitivity. You can regain metabolic flexibility, which simply means your body can easily switch between burning sugar and burning fat. You can protect and even rebuild muscle. You can calm cortisol with better sleep and stress management. That's why I love low-carb keto and carnivore-leaning approaches. They lower insulin, allow access to stored fat, and often reduce hunger naturally without white knuckling. So what does a practical game plan look like if you feel like you've broken your metabolism? Step one, stop the shame. Instead of saying, my body is broken, try, my body was trying to protect me with the information it had. That might sound soft, but it matters because people who feel ashamed are more likely to give up. People who feel curious are more likely to experiment. Step two, lower insulin most days. That usually means building meals around protein and healthy fats and cutting way back on sugar, refined grains, and constant snacking. Think meat, eggs, seafood, non-starchy vegetables if you tolerate them, and healthy fats rather than cereal, juice, and granola bars. When insulin comes down, your body can finally tap into stored fat without panicking. Step three, protect and build muscle. You don't need a bodybuilding membership card, but you do need some resistance. That can be body weight exercises, bands, or weights two to four times a week. And you need enough protein so your body has the raw materials to maintain that muscle. More muscle is like having a bigger engine idling in the background. Step four, move more without obsessing over formal exercise. Remember neat, parking further away, taking the stairs, short walks after meals, standing up to stretch during the day. All of those gently raise your daily burn without triggering the same famine alarm as a starvation diet. Step five, respect sleep and stress. Aim for a simple bedtime routine that helps you wind down. Lights dimmer, devices off earlier, maybe a short journaling session. During the day, find one stress valve you'll actually use. Prayer, breath work, a walk, talking with someone you trust. You don't have to live a spa life, but you do need to stop telling your body all day every day that the world is on fire. Step six, give it time. If you've been dieting hard for 10 or 20 years, your metabolism won't heal in 10 days. But I've seen people steadily lower insulin, build strength, sleep better, and watch their weight and waistline respond in ways they never saw with crash diets. So let's quickly recap. You're not failing diets because you're lazy or don't want it badly enough. You've been given strategies that ignore how the metabolism actually operates. Your body has been adapting, defending you for what it perceived as famine, and obeying hormones that were being pushed out of balance by modern food, chronic stress, and repeated calorie restriction. The hopeful part is this, your metabolism is listening. When you send it different signals, less sugar, more protein and healthy fats, more muscle, better sleep, it adapts in a different direction. It may be slower and less dramatic than the first two weeks of a crash diet, but it's far more sustainable and far kinder to your future self. I hope this discussion about metabolism served you well. And if it did, tell me in the comments what part made you say, okay, that finally makes sense. And if you know someone who's convinced their metabolism is broken, share this video with them. They deserve to hear that their body has been trying to protect them, not betray them. Your body is not the enemy. Once you understand the language of metabolism, you can finally stop fighting it and start being its partner. I'll see you in the next video.